Shalom Israel. Welcome again to Watch Men of the Faith Ministries. My name is Kasada Bar, and um, I'm going to continue where I left off at uh, previously in the book of Judges, the 19th chapter. Um, like I made mention earlier, all of this is alluding to, okay, the scattering of the nation of Israel. That's what the book of Judges, the 19th chapter, is talking about. And, um, and what I want to do is a quick recap, okay, just to, you know, bring us up to speed on what's going on in um, the book of Judges, the 19th chapter. And I just want to read verses 1 through 3. And then after that, I'm going to, um, I'm going to verse 20. Okay, and I'm going to read down to um, verse 30. Okay, and again, I'm just going to do a quick recap. Verse 1, book of Judges, the 19th chapter. As it reads, and it, come, and it came to pass in those days when there was no king in Israel. And the point that I wanted to bring out here now is that there's the literal meaning of the scripture. And then we have um, what we call a, a message within the message, or what we call um, the, the side level. Because you have, uh, according to my understanding, you have the four branches of trying to understand the scripture. You have the Peshat, the Remez, um, the Drash level, and the side level. So what we have to understand that there's a message behind the message. So where it's, when it says now there is no king in Israel, a king represents dominion, leadership, authority ship, and it also makes mention that there is there was no husband, no guidance in the nation of Israel in those days. And that's going to be very, very important. And we should all know that the king is Yahushua. The father sent the son to redeem the nation of Israel. So the one that died for the sins of the nation of Israel, his name was Yahushua. So there was no king, okay, no authority figure in the house of Israel in those days. Now this, you can also read this, um, this scripture literally, and there's no problem with that. It's just that I want to bring out the point, okay, that there's a higher understanding to what's actually um, been said here if you read it from the surface, just there's something else going on. So again, when there was no king in Israel, that there was a certain Levite sojourning on the side of Mount Ephraim, who took to him a concubine out of Bethlehem, Judah. Now, what I also looked at here now is the word Levite, and we know that it's pertaining to the priesthood. And we know now, we know now that every priest, okay, that held office, it was all eluding to, okay, the rightful priest who was going to eventually take the seat, okay? And again, all those priests, back when it talks about in the book of Leviticus when uh, Moses was setting up the priesthood, that is all eluding to the coming of the Messiah. The Messiah is the priest. The Messiah is the king. That's his appointed role or position that the Father gave him. And the father's name is Yahuwah. Now, um, and it also makes mention in verse 1 on um, the word concubine. Now, when you look up that word concubine in the Hebrew um, interlinear um, Bible, the word concubine is also associated with the word wife. So we see now this king took a wife. And when we go now at the beginning stages of understanding the Exodus, we understand that the Messiah chose a wife. He chose a woman out of Egypt, okay, brought her to Mount Sinai, came into covenant relationship with her by giving her rules and regulations to the marriage, all right? This is all going to be spelled out in detail as we read further down in the scriptures here. And again, I'm just giving a quick recap. Verse 2, and his... And the his is referring to the king, all right, the Messiah. His concubine, the concubine is the wife. The wife is the nation of Israel. So, again, I'm reading it again. And the Messiah's concubine, or his wife, played the whore against him. So we see now, what is the transgression of the wife? The transgression of the wife is that she played the harlot. She's a whore. She broke the rules and regulations to the covenant, okay, or, or the, the marriage agreement. She played the whore. And again, this is a literal story also, but this story has higher principles. So again, 
and his concubine or the father of the um, of the husband's wife played the harlot and again the his is referring to the messiah and the wife and the concubine is a nation of israel played the whore against him which is the messiah and went away and went away from him unto her father's house to bethlehem judah and was there for whole four whole months now let's look at what's going on here the woman the nation of israel plays the whore okay she commits adultery and what she do now she runs from the husband into her father's house this story sounds very very familiar if we if we remember what happened in the garden of eden all right there was a transgression made okay adam broke the laws statutes and commandments we have a situation now at when the laws were broken adam now hides from the husband both adam and eve all right they hide from the husband which is yahushua and this woman did the same thing so we have to make comparisons here and understand again that there are higher principles to understanding the scriptures look at it this way um we have a bunch of um pieces of the puzzle and what we have to do is put the picture back together again so that we would be able to understand the picture both forward and backwards that way nobody can make a mistake because again every single scripture every single um verse is alluding to the coming of the messiah this is a messianic movement and the quicker we're able to understand that this is talking about the messiah and the nation of israel from the book of bereshit all the way to the book of revelation it will make the scriptures that much easier for us to understand verse 3 and her husband which is yahushua but again this is a literal story at the same time and her husband arose and went after her to speak friendly unto her and to bring her again having a servant with him and a couple of asses and she brought him to her into her father's house and when the father of the damsel saw him he rejoiced to meet him now what's going on in verse 3 we have the husband going after the adulterous woman. This is what this whole thing is about. This was the purpose for the Messiah shedding his blood to reconcile the, adult, the adulterous woman back to him. And so we have here in verse 3 the very same thing going on. We have to understand allegories and parables those things are very, very important in helping us to understand the scriptures. Again, and her husband arose and went after her to speak friendly unto her. Now, when you go to the um, to uh, the so-called New Testament, the Brit Kadashah, we see the Messiah coming into Israel and speaking friendly into the nation of Israel to bring her back to him again to reconcile the wife back to the husband this is what's going on here i'm gonna read it again and her husband arose and went after her to speak friendly unto her and to bring her again this is all talking about repentance in understanding the brick kadasha we see that john the baptist was the forerunner for the messiah saying repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand and this is the lamb that's going to take away the sins of the adulterous woman. Real easy. Now, let's go to um, the book of Judges. And I'm going to read from the 20th verse. All right. Again, um, I can't recap the whole thing. All right. Because I want to finish this up. Verse 20. And the old man said, Shalom. Be unto thee, so he's talking to the man, the Messiah. Whosoever, excuse me, howsoever, let all thy wants lie upon me, only lodge not in the street. So he brought him into his house and gave um, provender unto the asses, and they washed their feet 
and did eat and drink. Now as they were making their hearts merry, behold, the men of the city, certain sons of Belal, and if you go to the Strong Concordance number 1108, the word Belal means worthlessness. So this is read this way, the sons of worthlessness. So now, the sons of worthlessness beset the house round about and beat at the door. Beat at the door. Who is the door? Yahushua is the door. That talks about that in detail in the book of Yohanan, the 10th chapter, where it, where it is explained to us in detail that Yahushua is the door. And these men beat at the door. The same thing that happened when the Messiah came into Jerusalem friendly. What happened? The scribes and the Pharisees, all right, the religious leaders in Jerusalem, they beat at the door. They beat and they and they defiled the Messiah. When I say they defiled the Messiah, I mean, you know, they were responsible, okay, with putting the Messiah to death. And we know now, again, that, that the, this, the Messiah was the lamb, okay, that was preordained to um, die um, at the beginning of the foundation of the earth. We understand that. This all prophecy has been fulfilled. But again, understanding scripture, they beat at the door. The scribes and the Pharisees beat at the Messiah. Uh, where are we at here? Verse... Verse um, 22. And they beat at the door and spoke to the master of the house, the old man, saying, Bring forth the man that came into thine house that we may know him. So the men of the city, okay, wanted to sexually abuse this man. And this is the same type of abuse that the Messiah suffered, okay, when he came into Jerusalem peacefully, all right, teaching repentance. Because the scriptures clearly tells us in the so-called New Testament that I, it would have been such an easy thing for me to have gathered the children of Israel at that particular time. But they rejected the chief cornerstone. So now what we have now is that the prophecy has to play itself out. So in actuality, what's happening now is here is that we're upholding or holding now our own captivity. We're, holding, we're responsible for the reason why we're still here. Because we can't come together. Brothers and sisters still don't get along to this very day. We are our own worst enemies. It is nothing for you who, for the father to, to blow that, that, that trumpet to send his son back to redeem his elect. No problem. What's the hold up? The nation of Israel is the holdup. Verse 22. And the man, the master of the house, went out unto them and said unto them, No, my brethren, no, I pray you do not so wickedly, seeing that this man is coming to mine house, do not this folly. Because this man knows that when he brought this man into his house, that this man is now under his um authority ship this man is now in covenant relationship because he brought this man over the threshold the threshold is very very important we can't get into new jerusalem unless the groom ushers the bride over the threshold that's very important for us to understand verse 24 the man said behold here is my daughter, a maiden, and his, the man of the house, his concubine. Them will I bring out now, and humble you them, and do with them that what seemeth good unto you. But unto this man do not such a so vile a thing. Now, we should also see that um, this story sounds familiar, because we have to also remember what happened during the time of um, Sodom and Gomorrah, what Lot. All right, so as um, these men came into the city, we all know the story, and um, these, neighbor, um, these five neighboring cities of, of Sodom, okay, these men came out and wanted to defile these men. So this is a bunch of perverted uh, wickedness that's going on here. 
Now we see now that the man now brings out um, his maiden and his concubine. Verse 25. But the men would not hearken to him. So the men took his concubine and brought her forth unto them, and they knew her. When it says that they knew her, they had sexual intercourse with this woman and abused her. This woman, this woman is representing the nation of Israel. They abused her all the night until the